They've got legs for days and looks that could kill, but there are some big brains behind those flawless faces. From coding to photography to, um, glassware? Here's why beauty, and what's considered normal, is in the eye of the beholder. Carly Kloss got scouted at a mall at age 13, and as she told USA Today, I, at the time, had no idea of fashion and of the modeling world. But Kloss quickly made a name for herself as a teen, with Vogue Paris pegging her as one of the top 30 models of the 2000s. I wish I would have been a little more mature, a little older, because it, there's a lot. It, this career, you know, there's a lot you have to handle. These days, along with modeling, Kloss has turned her attention to other ventures, and she's since discovered coding, launching Code with Klossy, a program designed to get young girls into computer computer programming. She explained to USA Today, I have been able to meet so many entrepreneurs in tech, and I think everyone realizes it's the language that's building the technology of today, and certainly of our future. The stunner has also branched into baking, teaming up with Momofuku Milk Bar to create a nutritious cookie line called Carly's Cookies. And in 2018, she took over as host, and later appeared as a guest judge of Bravo's Project Runway, after Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn stepped away from the series. The iconic Stephanie Seymour was also part of the 90s supermodel squad, and she put her clout behind Victoria's Secret in its heyday. As Page Six reported, a brand creative director once called Seymour, ambitious, disciplined, and professional. She had no problems taking off her clothes and doing what had to be done. Seymour also made headlines for her love life. She was married to guitarist Tommy Andrews and had a high-profile relationship with Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. She then married billionaire Peter Brandt, and the couple had three children. Once Seymour was ready to shift away from modeling, she took took a page out of her past and launched a lingerie line, Raven and Sparrow. She told the CFDA in 2017, I have always loved lingerie. Lingerie has its place in fashion, and I believe it's a partially lost art that I would like to bring back. I wanted to create a brand. This is not a celebrity line. I work with very good designers who have a lot to do with what I am doing. I didn't want to put my name out there and not theirs. Rosie Huntington Whiteley rose to fame as a Victoria's Secret angel. Discovered as a teen, the model and actor has enjoyed an action-packed career ever since. She told Harper's Bazaar in 2019, I've worked every day since I was 16 years old. I've tried to be professional in every way. I have really dedicated myself to my career. Yes, I am determined. You have to be if you want to continue working. It doesn't just hand itself to you. The one piece of career advice that's always stuck with me is it takes a lifetime to build a reputation and just one second to destroy it. While she had major success as a model, Huntington Whiteley became an entrepreneur in 2018 with her beauty brand and digital world, Rose Inc. She said, It feels like my whole career led me to this point. As a mother herself, Huntington Whiteley targets the busy mom as well as working women, and the strategy seems to be a success. The model is worth an estimated $30 million thanks to the line, as well as her lingerie collection for Marks & Spencer, her modeling and acting. Famous for his work with Dolce et Gabbana, David Gandhi became one of the highest paid male models in the world. But none of that came easy. As he told the diary of a CEO in October 2021, you have to have that ambition to know the exact point to where you want to be. Once Gandhi made it to the top, he was ready to try something new. This fresh concept was a clothing brand called David Gandhi Wellwear, with the mission to empower people to live happier, stress-reduced lives with a greater sense of well-being and style. Gandhi calls his brand emotionally durable, and the entire line, including loungewear and sweats, is meant to inspire confidence. It's a concept that's personal for Gandhi, as he admitted to Diary of a CEO. No one can be as, as uh, harsh a critic to me as I am myself. Mm. I will beat myself up in something fatal. Adrienne Curry won the debut season of America's Next Top Model in 2003, and while she saw some initial success, it appeared that the industry wasn't everything she thought it would be. Not only that, but she claimed that a sponsor for the series made promises that were never honored. In a since-deleted Instagram post, Curry said, We were led to believe daily the winner would be instantly rich and a huge Revlon cover girl. This was a lie. After the show, Revlon informed me it didn't matter who won, they were never going to have us as a model. She claimed that several Revlon staffers took pity on her and paid her a small amount to have a makeup artist work with her, but ultimately, it was a hollow offer. She said, I never got the money. To this day, I have not been paid. Curry also got implants to better her chances in the industry, a decision she ultimately regretted. As she revealed to In Touch in 2022, the one on my right side had ruptured inside and leaked, which caused necrosis, where the flesh dies, so they had to remove most of my real breasts on the right side, which meant they had to give me a huge breast reduction. In light of these difficult experiences, Curry moved to Montana to seek out a simpler way of living. She married the love of her life and now sells Avon while keeping fans updated on her blog. And I'm like, and by God's blessing, here it is. Pink. 
Helena Christensen hit the spotlight after winning Miss Universe Denmark in 1986 and joined the OG team of supermodels who took over the world. She was a Victoria's Secret angel and starred in Chris Isaac's music video for Wicked Game. But Helena says it wasn't as hot to shoot as it was to watch. She's a great actress. I mean, she really, she put her, she pretended to like me. As Christensen recalled to Glamour, to be completely honest, and this might ruin the romantic notion of the video, but my legs were bleeding from the knees and down because I was running on black lava and it was cutting into my skin. So not so glamorous and sexy at all, but who cares? It was worth it. Easy and cool, you know, you just do it and nothing special about it. More than three decades later, Christensen now works as a photographer, publishing her work in everything from Vogue to Fat Magazine. She's also a co-founder of Nylon Magazine, as well as the creative director for the luxury fragrance line Strange Love. Supermodel Rachel Hunter entered the industry reluctantly, never considering it a lifelong career. She told Beautiful Humans, I never wanted to be a model. I did not think highly of it. I did the covers of Australian Vogue. I thought I would do modeling for six months, earn some money, and then that would be it. But of course, that wasn't it. Hunter went on to have an incredibly successful career and starred in the TV series Rachel Hunter's Tour of Beauty. But while she covered Italian Vogue, Elle, and Harper's Bazaar, it was never the right fit. As she wrote on her website, I would always retreat into a church, into a garden, or into the woods, into different spiritual practices. My heart yearned always to return to the inner sanctum. After hearing her late mother once say that she regretted not taking the chance in life to really be herself. Hunter journeyed to India to expand her spiritual practice. The experience was so life-altering that she studied to become a teacher. Hunter now hosts yoga retreats in Bali. You always are who you are. You can't hide that. Kim Stoltz made a name for herself on America's Next Top Model season five. While she didn't win, she still went on to land a role as a correspondent on MTV. But while she may have made a splash, she wasn't in it for the long haul. Instead, Stoltz ultimately pursued a career in banking. And in 2018, Bank of America tapped her as the head of prime brokerage sales. On Twitter, Stoltz was quoted as describing her employer as diverse and welcoming. It promotes an LGBT inclusive culture that makes me feel extremely proud to be who I am. Stoltz also published a book in 2014 called unfriending my ex and other things I'll never do, exploring social media-driven culture and her own relationship history. In a Reddit AMA, she added, As for unfriending, I almost think it's a compliment from an ex. Probably too painful for your ex to look at your feet all the time if she misses you. It's kind of become like the world's on one big reality show or all contestants trying to compete. Whitney Thompson Forrester won America's Next Top Model Cycle 10, and while she found success as a plus-size model, the industry couldn't handle her ambition. In line with her own way of eating, she went on to open a vegan restaurant, Craft 850, in Panama City Beach, Florida. You know, you can only model for Saks Fifth Avenue and JCPenney's so many times before you get kind of tired of it, honestly. Thompson Forrester also uses her platform to stand up against toxic diet culture. She blogged, You have to realize that we have a multi-billion dollar diet industry who only makes money if they can convince you that you need to lose weight. There's a reason that no one loses weight and keeps it off. The former model has also been open about her pregnancy journey and the pushback that she initially received, writing, When I first announced that I was going to have a vegan pregnancy and raise a vegan baby, I was met with some negativity. With guidance from her doctor, Doctor, Thompson Forrester experienced a healthy pregnancy and now shares the advice with her fans and curious readers on social media. Kathy Ireland was another original member of the iconic supermodel group of the 90s. She landed the cover of Sports Illustrated three times, beginning in the late 80s and early 90s, and made 10 other appearances in the magazine. She was even featured once while she was pregnant. You do kind of have to flirt with a camera. But when it was time for her to shift away from modeling, Ireland went on to launch a clothing line that was featured at Kmart. It was so successful, it quickly blew up into an empire of home goods called Kathy Ireland Worldwide. By 2012, Forbes claimed she was more successful than Martha Stewart. This entrepreneurial spirit has proven to be the winning ticket for Ireland, and she now sells everything from thermoses to rugs. In 2019, the Daily Mail estimated her business earnings to hit somewhere around the $2 billion mark. And based on her website, it seems that Ireland has created an entire branded universe, and the payoff has been huge. But the former model has never leveraged her fame to earn loyal customers. She even noted that in the early days, she didn't do in-person launches, because too many people came to meet the model, not the mogul. As she told Forbes, what happens is the story store gets cluttered with guys who are there with 500-year-old copies of Sports Illustrated. How does that help a busy mom? These people are just in her way. Clearly, Ireland's focus is on the future and building her empire. She may not be about busting out her early swimsuit pics, but when you look like this now, who needs that old magazine cover anyway?
OG beauty Claudia Schiffer helped launch the supermodel phenomenon. As she recalled to Vogue, the supermodel was a creation of the late 80s and 90s. We were diverse in looks and nationalities, but became a force together. We enjoyed a fame that stretched way beyond fashion and across the globe, and we became known by name. My goal was never too far away that I could never reach it. While it made Schiffer a global sensation, it wasn't always easy living in the spotlight. She added, Being a supermodel was like being a rock star. I even had a guard to protect my belongings backstage, as my underwear was constantly getting stolen. But decades later, Schiffer is focusing her talents on glassware, with a nature-inspired collaboration featuring wall pieces, vases, and stands. The model also launched a clothing line with Realization Par, noting on the designer's website, The 90s is the decade everyone is talking about at the moment, so we took inspiration from original 90s pieces in my archive wardrobe. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite models are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.